video, we're going to take a look at how to change it and replay it. But showing this video is only one suggested approach. Your maintenance procedure, lubricant selection, change interval, and method of rendering service may be new. If you are unsure of what to do, following the manufacturer's recommendation, you'll be the same thing. So we'll probably control the video you can see provided with the voice, common sense, and the proper tool. Always ready to do a magic innovation just in case you need. Your bike may be lifted, so always consult the manufacturer's process to ensure that you're going to be able to do it otherwise. Safety is just as important as you walk the bike. So please, don't smoke or eat on the way. Just as a tool to drink or use the LPG. Work your bike properly. Select the best of the work area. If you notice any oil bleeding from the XT's covers, caps, or plugs, it usually indicates a flattened O-ring. This is a very common occurrence on the XT and is caused by the rubber breaking down under heat. Once broken down, the rubber loses its spring and can no longer push against the machine's surfaces. Oil is then able to wick around the seal. In most cases, this is only a few drops and doesn't warrant immediate attention. If excessively large oil spots are dripping as observed, then you should replace those O-rings. Always keep an eye on any leaks and deal with them based on severity. If you have been operating your bike in muddy or dirty conditions, it's best to clean it before undertaking any maintenance. Be smart and take a few extra minutes to perform this task. Dirt left on the bike can break loose and inadvertently wind up inside the engine where it could do damage. It can also contaminate threads and cause seals to leak. Start the bike outside in open air and allow it to warm up so the oil flows freely. Running a cold bike at fast idle for about 10 minutes in a warm climate will be enough. If you're in very cold temperatures, run the bike for a longer time. The idea is to get the engine oil hot, but not at scalding temperatures. Once the oil has heated satisfactorily, shut off the engine. The bike is now clean and warm. Select a safe location out of harm's way that provides the room you'll need to begin the work. A smooth, uncluttered hard surface like a garage or shop floor works best. Make sure the support surface is clean, dry, and provides good traction. Water, dirt, mud, and any rogue fluids that may cause you or the bike to slip should be avoided. With the 2003 XT225, I find supporting the bike by its factory kickstand is fine. In fact, the lean is good for draining the oil. Many support options exist to include a variety of service stands, aftermarket products, and other homebrew devices. Discussing the merits of these is beyond the scope of this video. Whatever you use to support your bike, make sure it's sturdy and allows you to remove the bash plate and have easy access to the service areas. You'll also need to access the swing arm grease fittings, which will be covered later in this video. On the XT225, there is a single bolt on the front of the bash plate that facilitates removal. The rear of the bash plate is supported in two grommets. With the bolt removed, you can slide the bash plate forward to remove it. 
Watch the hot exhaust pipe and make sure not to lose any of the hardware or grommets. On some models, you'll have a rubber pad between the bash plate and the engine case bottom. Inspect the engine case, bolt, grommets, and bash plate. Clean any dirt away. Bang out any dents in the bash plate. A hammer works best in a pinch, but a rubber mallet is best. Replace any worn, broken, or ripped parts. Put loose hardware and grommets in the bash plate and put them aside for now. Locate a suitable oil drain receptacle. You can cut the bottom of a plastic jug out or use a commercially made drain pan like the one shown here. You'll be draining about one quart of spent oil from the engine. Loosen the oil filler plug first to allow air to enter the engine's crankcase. This may smooth the drain oil stream flow. Using a 19 millimeter socket or box wrench, loosen the crankcase drain plug by turning it counterclockwise as shown. Use six point tooling if you have it. Once loose, a socket with extension will help remove the plug completely. Make sure to remove any dirt around the plug before removing it. My drain receptacle has a screen to prevent losing parts in the spent oil. Diesel fuel is one cleaning solution. A plastic one-quart cup and toothbrush make a good parts cleaner. Small metal filings found in the thimble screen on new engines is normal. Clean all parts and place on lint-free towel. Clean threads and O-ring on drain plug. Make sure machine surface on engine is perfectly clean. Position spring over thimble screen as shown and insert into the drain hole as shown. Proper orientation of these parts is very important. Using a socket with extension will make starting the drain plug easier. The engine and drain plug threads are soft, fine, and delicate. Make sure not to cross thread the plug by forcing the start. The plug should screw in easily by hand. Make up the threads by hand until the O-ring seats. Tighten the plug using a box wrench to the same approximate tension used to loosen it.